Yeah, nice. It works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we, um, we're diving now from, a, let's say, a, a global focus straight to a regional focus. However, for this discussion, I would like to um, not, not necessarily dive into policies affecting Enschede directly, but rather see kind of a, an overview of the relation between cultural policy and cultural making, yeah. since those are kind of the fields that we, I guess, stem from, right? Um, so as, a, as kind of a starting question, I suppose, and then I would like to have this turn more into a, a conversation rather than an interview, let's say, is uh, uh, what, let's say now that we're at this event, right? How do you see the role of uh, art and culture in the creation of new knowledge in innovation? And, well, I believe the role of art and culture is crucial in innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's also one of the main reasons that I'm so happy that we can show it here on this stage uh, today. Mm -hmm. Because I think that uh, a lot of artists and cultural makers, like yourself and many others in our city, um, they are eager to discover new uh, fields of interest to to explore things mm -hmm. and they are uh, I think uh, the example of innovators mm -hmm. uh, so I think there's a there's a big connection between those uh, topics and it's and it's really it's really important for us I think I think it's really interesting to then kind of straight away dive into is uh, the relation between uh, I think this is some, something that I would like to explore a little bit during this conversation, is the relation between uh, the responsibility of the individual maker to bring forth his or her work into the society and the role of government to support, yeah. view that platform. Uh, so I, as a, as a maker, often uh, feel that, that uh, it's, I would, if I could, if I would have the luxury to do so, I would kind of exist in my little bubble making my things all day yeah. and at the end of the day someone would come pick it up and drive <laughs> it away from me and then just you know get rid of it but of course that's not the reality there's yeah. a huge difference between uh, let's say making art yeah. and being an artist there's a huge kind of flow of uh, of interacting with the uh, um, bodies interacting with all kind of different yeah. uh, policies directly or indirectly um, and I guess my, my, my question would be, uh, even as a hint to, I guess, some also makers in the audience, like what would be a way for arts to actually get closer to that uh, field, to that, or get over that hurdle, let's say? Well, I, I think this is exactly the reason that we need uh, ecosystems, that we need, um, well, we are working a lot on broedplaatsen, um, as we call it in Dutch, if you mm -hmm. translate literally. We came up with breeding grounds, but I think that's not the right term. I think it's more incubators. We, know, we need those kind of places um, to... Uh, well, the artists, um, they are perfectly capable of creating, of coming up with brilliant things. Uh, but we need to connect them and give them the opportunity to connect to others that can help them to give it the next step uh, mm -hmm. towards the audience. Uh, because I, I really, I, I see a lot in, in, in Enschede and, uh, and the region. Um, there are a lot of brilliant artists that are not always capable of doing that ecosystem and making the connections. So what is the role of, uh, of the government, I believe, of the local government here, the gemeente, is also to, uh, well, to facilitate them and to give them uh, a nice atmosphere, an ecosystem in which they can, well, thrive their own big goals and mm -hmm. and this is where we should meet each other mm -hmm. uh, and where we should invest i mean i do not have to interfere in the creative process and uh, the content of the uh, of the art but mm -hmm. i i should uh, be uh, connected to the world around it as um, uh, as an alderman in, in our city i should um, uh, policies together with my colleagues to uh, facilitate those artists to uh, to reach out to the to the city and to the world around it, mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to have somebody that comes into your office or your workshop to pick it up, mm -hmm. that that's exactly what we need to do. Okay, great. And that's, that's what that's what we are trying. We're not doing always brilliant enough, uh, but I think we are making small steps forward, like Frans Timmermans uh, said. Mm -hmm. And every small step is a little bit. Uh, and if I see what is uh, what is developing in the last few years, it's I think it's great. Uh, because um, I really believe that we shifted as uh, a city and as a region from, yeah, well, it's okay to be here, 
and to start, but you got to be somewhere else in the world to make the next step. Mm -hmm. And we are slowly moving a little bit towards the moment that we are saying we're proud to be here, we want to develop our art, we want to stay, because we think that Enschede is the place for innovation and creativity. Mm -hmm. And that's what the goal is in the end. Okay. Um, so I, 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 think I like to approach this kind of from, the, from a, let's say, a certain meta layer, kind of zooming out a little bit, right? From an, from an art historical perspective, you see that we have shifted a little bit in the appreciation of what art is from uh, a place that is, let's say, funded by the museum, funded by the galleries, uh, into kind of the kind of works that we also see around us here that do not necessarily have a very, uh, let's say, marketable material body, right? Yeah. So very often it's a, it's a conceptual piece or it's a digital piece or something that doesn't exist, let's say, in kind of a free market domain. Uh, so as artists and as, as culture as a whole, we have shifted towards appreciating subsidy style models yeah. for these kinds of uh, where we get our money from, right? Um, and of course, from a, uh, as a part of that, there's also a shift in kind of responsibility because let's say the free market doesn't need to be responsible for everything, kind of we all know that, right? Where yeah. the money flows, the money goes, whatever. And we kind of turn a blind eye even sometimes to that. Uh, however, as civil money, as public money, we're always dealing with these kind of responsibilities. Yeah. And uh, I would like to uh, maybe together reflect a little bit on the balance between being, let's say, uh, let's say, even the artist as a public servant or the artist as a form of public servant. Like, how does that work? So, what is the relation, let's say, to uh, the responsibility, the responsibility that you have as a government towards your your funding body, which is then the taxpayer? and uh, the broader goals of culture, which are not necessarily aligned with those well, responsibilities. I think um, I have to be able to show the value of what we are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and by example, I mean, I know from you the story that you planted a chip in your arm. Mm -hmm. uh, not very mainstream to do so. No. Uh, but maybe one day you are mainstream as well. Uh, maybe you don't hope to be, but... Uh, and, and, and that's the example. Uh, some things start as niche, as small, as really weird, mm -hmm. uh, and someday they show their value, they become, they be, they become mainstream, mm -hmm. and it goes on. And this is the process that we have to facilitate. So what I have to show um, to the taxpayers mm -hmm. is that I invest the money in culture, not because I like it or it's my hobby, but because it has a value for the society. Mm -hmm. uh, the creativity and the invention of new things um, that sometimes is very niche and for a small group, but in the end becomes a little bit more mainstream and then you can move on to the next topic. Mm -hmm. So this process is something that we, uh, uh, that we should do. And the content of it, uh, not up to me. Okay. Uh, cool. I mean, when I started studying in the university, I started studying electrotechnics. Very interesting. I quit after three months. It was not my <laughs> cup of tea, and I went on to public administration. So that's why I'm here, maybe. Okay. Uh, and that's why I should not be in the content. That's, that's for all the brilliant people and the creative people in our city. And I try to be creative a little bit more in the process that we have. Mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned the word um, value. Yeah. And I think the word value is really interesting when we're dealing about the arts, right? So as an artist, especially in, in Dutch, we have this beautiful difference between waarde and waarden. Yeah. Yes, and this, I guess in English you could say value is also kind of a generalized term in that sense. Yeah. So especially when we're dealing with very kind of boring practical stuff like housing, like funding, like stuff like that, value is usually expressed in euros. Yeah. Uh, when we as an artist or as an artist collective work in a particular field, we're often talking about value in a more abstract sense, value yeah. as a more long-term uh, thing. And I, I've realized that, um, uh, especially Enschede, really fosters this, this uh, idea of, let's say, the long-term value of a particular artistic place. Yeah. Um, but I feel that as an artist, very often it's incredibly hard to then translate that into having conversations about value in euros. Yeah. And this often plays part when we're talking about uh, housing, when yeah. we're talking about funding. Yeah. Um, do you think that the municipality has some kind of role to play in that translation of value? Yeah, I do think so, because um, if you are working as an artist or innovator or entrepreneur on your concept, you are not always busy with the economic value, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you do need uh, a bed to sleep in and a roof over your head, uh, and some income is also nice to pay your bills. Uh, so they have a connection. Mm 
Uh, and I think our role is, again, if you talk about incubators, it's about the places to work, but there's also, also a world around it. So we should uh, be able, much better than we did in the past, to uh, create um, um, well areas in the city where you can live as a young person or as an artist that is affordable, um, where you can grow, where you have the room to uh, experiment. Uh, so yes, we do have a role, and it's not always easy because we are almost always uh, calculated by numbers uh, in uh, in our policies. But we have to try to make the connection a little bit more between those numbers and those values you describe. Because I think in the end, um, uh, also in our work, it's always about elections. In the end, when people sure. vote in elections, they do not vote for numbers. They do not vote for. Uh, hardcore uh, economic uh, results going on. Only they vote for what what they think is important. So there you have the same process going on. You sh you you need to be able to show well what is the result and what does it contribute in your life, and you need to arrange all the rest. And there again, that's the division of work between us. I would mm -hmm. say. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, I, I I I you're kind of hinting at at. Uh at some questions, I, I actually have asked uh, uh, your colleagues uh, Marlene and, and, and Miriam a couple of times, which is that in, uh, let's say, cultural policy, very often we hear words like uh, independence, mm -hmm. uh, autonomy, uh, zelfstandigheid, zelfredzaamheid. Um, and a very funny one for me personally, as a, as a person currently hosting a young institution myself, is this phenomenon of professionalization. Yeah. And I think these these two, these three terms are um, uh, very hard to define, actually, in the in the cultural field. Do, would you agree? Uh, yes, I understand where it's uh, where it's difficult because um, what we are always saying as uh, as a local government is that well, you need to be you need to professionalize because that well uh, gives you the opportunity to develop your business and words like that. Uh, on the same time, well, you ask for autonomy. You want autonomy, you want your own space to develop and to create. So it has something to do with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think there's a role for us to, to help in this process. Uh, but there's also a role for the makers in our city to also make the bridge towards us. Uh, well, you have to help us to be able to help you. That, that, that should be the approach. And what we are trying is to reach out, and I hope that goes in two directions, and I, this is my experience that it does, but sometimes it's difficult because we speak different languages. Mm -hmm. Usually when we enter a, a collective of, as, of artists as a, uh, as a municipality, we start talking about business cases and about, uh, well, where's your business plan for the next uh, four years, uh, otherwise we cannot allocate, uh, allocate subsidies uh, towards you, etc. Um, and then the artist thinks, what? What the hell is this? Yeah. What should I do? Uh, yeah. This is a strange world for me. So we have to, well, we have to make the bridge. I, I, th I think it's it's really interesting that you that you talk about language here. I think on whatever is fundamental issue. Yeah. And maybe even actually the reason I'm sitting here right now in my suit and whatever is that for the last couple of years I've been trying to understand that relation. Yeah. Because for me it's an incredibly let's say unnatural thing. For me, it's as, an, as, a, as the artistic mind, let's say, whatever. I, I don't like to categorize myself necessarily as such, but I guess if we're trying to create dichotomies here, yeah. this is a funny one. Um, is that idea that if I would need a bike to get somewhere, I would ask a friend, hey, can I borrow your bike for, uh, for an afternoon? Yeah. Uh, and, and not necessarily think, okay, how am I going to uh, find the business case in order to rent <laughs> this bike, for example. Or as some cases actually I've, I've seen uh, is, is this idea of, okay, I'm going to assign someone to manage, to arrange, to find the bike for me, and then we need some other person to get funding so we can pay this other person who can manage to arrange this bike for me. Yeah. So, and, and we then, also need a business control, by the way, to check the process. Exactly. Yeah. This is exactly my point. And yeah. I think it's in, to name a very um, analogy because very often, and, and uh, I think, in, to name a very local example, I think uh, 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 Studio Complex, so the, the loads people, are like a really beautiful example of yeah. this. These are incredibly intelligent, no-nonsense people. So they know exactly where they need to get, where they need to be. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, I think also within Enschede, they are a beautiful example of not at all speaking the same language as the, as the local government. Uh, so, I admit, yeah. And, it, and this, is a, this is a beautiful kind of, um, I think, 
a collaborative effort in order to make the city a, be a more beautiful place. However, this language problem. You yeah, know? well, I mean, it, it is uh, something that we have to fix from different sides because, I mean, you are wearing the suit and you are trying to, uh, uh, well, understand our world. Um, uh, what we are trying to do as a city as well is to invest in, uh, in people, in civil servants that also understand the other side uh, of the table. Uh, Frans Timmermans was talking about the interest of the other side, the art of diplomacy. I, I guess you can apply that. You can apply it to this as well, because I believe that if our uh, civil servants understand how the cultural sector, how innovation, how creativity works, then they can better they can be better at doing their own jobs mm -hmm. uh, in the team. And I see a development that we have a lot of young people now uh, since the last few years in in the in the team. Uh, that really uh, make a big contribution uh, to this uh, and they are really trying to, to understand, to reach out, to, uh, to join uh, and uh, well I, I'm trying to motivate it as well, I'm trying to join myself as well too mm -hmm. uh, because I understand that when I'm on Monday evening in the city council I have to, of course, I have to explain what I did and how it fits in the policy etc. Mm -hmm. um, but I can try to, to adapt as well and tell the story there as well that sometimes, well, we need to do innovative things in order to, to get back creativity and innovation. And I, and I, and I do have to, uh, I have to let's say, uh, give, give that back in the shape of a, of a compliment. This is the first uh, year for me that as a cultural maker, the policy makers are part of my audience. Great. And this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is a really interesting kind of sub. And then there's a all of a sudden they pop in and then you're like, oh, they're, they're here, but yeah. hey guys, what's up? And then there's a conversation that starts to happen, you know? Yeah, that, but that's really cool because um, uh, we, uh, as a municipality, we fund the Dutch Innovation Days. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, the money is coming from both uh, economic policies and cultural policies. Mm. And that was uh, uh, something that uh, internally we had a discussion, well, we want to give this the next, uh, the next step. Yeah. And they are doing great things. We really believe in this. Um, and the money we, we got to subsidize it came from both fields. Uh, and uh, when we were preparing this discussion, um, the people were uh, in, in the room in the meeting from both the economic team and the cultural uh, team. Mm -hmm. So also in those kind of uh, processes, we try to, to join uh, because you cannot only ask from cultural makers to, to make a business case. You also need to ask from the businesses and the economic policy uh, guys and girls in our municipality to get a little bit more cultural and creative. Mm -hmm. So it goes both ways. So that's it's great to hear. Thanks. In the in the spirit of going both ways, it's uh, there's a kind of a global you would call movement going on right now with uh, artistic integration in non-artistic spaces. Yeah. So that's let's say the artist residencies in the in the hospitals and the universities. Yeah. In the governments, do you? Uh, see like a future on the table for something like that in this city as well? Why not? Yeah. I mean, uh, challenge me. Uh, if there's someone that wants to do it, that wants to start tomorrow, uh, well, I will try to, uh, to make some space. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Let's have that conversation then yeah. after, after this. It will be super fun. Um, <laughs> uh, we, have a, we have a new cultural Noda coming up. Yeah. So uh, the last one is uh, eight or nine years old, I believe. Something like that, maybe even ten. Yeah. And, I, and there's this uh, thing that I that I first wish to share with the audience, and then wish to reflect on you with. Uh, I was I was part of some meetings about this cultural noda, and part of making a cultural noda is actually defining what culture is. Because yeah. if you want to uh, make subsidies surrounding culture, you need to know what you're actually t referring to as culture. So they were, they made a list of a few definitions of culture. And the first definition that I heard was, uh, culture is what happens in your free time. And that stunted me, really. Uh, I thought that was super funny. I thought it was incredibly funny. How do you, how do you think about that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think this is a really difficult question because uh, I think for a lot of people, it's something different. Mm -hmm. uh, culture is, is uh, for me, it's really broad. Uh, it, it can be... It, well, it can be about really small things uh, in traditions and stuff like that, and it can be in really big uh, philosophical questions and, and everything in between. So, to be honest, uh, I think it's one of the hardest things to write down a definition about culture. So, 
I would be more interested in focusing on, okay, what's the next step and what are we going to do? Uh, and what are we going to do to keep abroad an open mind also about what culture is? Um, and, and that's why I hope that we also wrote down something about those incubators. We wrote down something about the, uh, yeah, well, the, 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 the really ugly word, but the middle segment in culture, mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. not the amateur sector, not the top sector, but everything in between. That we are not, we are not doing enough to facilitate that at the moment. And that's mm -hmm. the bridge between, uh, well, the, the, the small cultural maker that has a big future and doesn't is not able for the, uh, to do the next step. Mm -hmm. uh, we are focusing, uh, focusing on those kind of things where mm -hmm. we believe we can help. And then this definition, yeah, well, sure. I, I, I feel what you say. <laughs> so, uh, you, you, uh, you refer to these as, um, as uh, small spaces or small yeah. venues and stuff like that. Um, th these exist and then alongside of that or kind of surrounding this, there's such a thing as, uh, especially in Enschede with a really vibrant scene as underground culture. Yeah. Uh, how do you do, do you how do you see the role of underground culture with this entire thing? So, the, uh, with underground culture, I'm referring to places that serve a really particular niche yeah. that do not do not necessarily wish to become mainstream, even with what they're doing, but wish to become a very important part of a particular, let's say, subculture. Yeah. Well, I think it's important to always keep a space for those kind of developments. Uh, always keep a space for underground culture. And sometimes it's difficult because uh, uh, um, the, the way we work as a municipality is always by talking to other organizations, to collectives, uh, to some individuals that are really active. And the thing about underground culture, it's not always that brilliantly organized because it's so underground and different and etc. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think it's a, it's a huge step that the sector, by, by example, in which you are also... Uh, um, playing a, a big role, um, organize themselves to have this conversation with us, with us. Because to be honest, I do not know what is the next underground initiative. And maybe mm -hmm. you don't even know. Uh, but we gotta keep an open mind to do also the good things to facilitate the next innovators and the mm -hmm. next underground scene in our city. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, giving the one minute warning, so I would like to ask a final question yeah. housed under uh, my, uh, my lovely artistic residency space, uh, Black Brick Underground, which yeah. is housed underneath the uh, station square. Literally underground. Literally, yeah. literally. And it's, in the, it's in the basement, the 700 square meter basement there. Uh, that building is going to be torn down. Yeah. Can I have the promise for <laughs> and, and you want to take it away to the ground? Dus met de grond gelijk maken. <laughs> and, and you want to keep the underground. That would be lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not, maybe not literally in that, in that exact space, but yes, I, I, my promise, and I did this promise before, I will do it again, is that there will, there will be a next place where this underground is uh, in our city. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you all for coming. Thank you.